All right, it's morning in the land of the Hellion Rocks. I just got up and did some inspirational music. Got some Justin Bieber happening. Got some Miley Cyrus going. And then to top it all off, I got JD from Psycho Pain and Black Label Society talking to me right now. What's happening, brother? What's going on, brother? I just put my Miley Cyrus record down. <laughs> you know, that's some inspirational music. You know, it just so happens that, you know, I go look at my CDs. They're, they're, they're all in alphabetical order. And Cyrus and Psycho Pain. Uh, right there. What happened to you is so funny because when the record came out in 2009, I went to the Best Buy. And I took a picture of the uh, the bin, you know, the CD bin, because it was like right. Miley Cyrus and then Cycle. I was like, oh, that's that's awesome, dude. I was like, four with that. That'd be great. It'd be amazing. That's that's awesome. So, <clears throat> so Cycle of Pain, man. <clears throat> Sorry. Got a, you guys got a new EP coming out, right? Uh, pain Us. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you got you to say it like Chappelle. Pain Us! <laughs> um, a little bit of a delay, right? But it's going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a delay, but, uh, yeah, we're getting it out. We're going to just probably want to do it ourselves because, you know what, sometimes you've got to say stuff in your own hands if you want to get it done, you know? So uh, I think that's the route we're going to have to go. But uh, I think people are going to dig it. So, uh, yeah, we're psyched to get it out finally, you know? Yeah, absolutely. The the first record, um, you know, to, to be honest with you, man, you know, I, I was all excited about it because, uh, you know, obviously – a black label fan, obviously, all that, you know, right. I knew, knew of you when you, you know, you stepped in for Pride and Glory, and mm-hmm. um, I heard about the project, you know, Psycho Pain, and, you know, I did a little bit of digging, a little bit of investigative journalism, found out, you know, you've been hanging out with those cats for quite a while, and I thought, you know, this ought to be a great record when it comes out, you know, a lot of time, a lot of time to develop good gel, you know, and stuff like that, and sure enough, what a great record, man, it's it's eclectic. So, you know, it's all over the map. It's not, you know, just like straight up in your face rock and roll. It's got all kinds of feeling to it. So, uh, you know, kudos to you on that, man. Definitely, man. Uh, you know, we got a lot of influences, you know, and, uh, like you said, we, we've been together. We were friends forever, man. We were in a band when we were like 15 years old together, you know, playing Maiden tunes and, uh, the old Scorpion song, you know, Judas Priest and stuff, you know, so. We've been we've been together for years, and all throughout the years, we always, you know, we've been friends and jammed together, and, and uh, wrote together, and then um, I got an opportunity in 2009 to do something, and I, I said, you know what, I'd like to do this with my brothers, man, and they're like, yeah, it'd be great, so then uh, Cycle of Pain got to actually get a record on the market. Yeah, it's a, it's a kick-ass record, and a lot of people that, I, you know, that I'm friends with, you know, the like Garcia, Ish, and Lacey, and, uh, you know, a lot of the Black Label family have you know, a lot of good things to say about it, and I think that... You know, it's, it's unfortunate that the, the corporate industry world decides to ignore great albums like that. And uh, anybody listening right now, I, re- I recommend you go out and grab that record. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a good feeling record, man. You can tell. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's a shame that it didn't get an, enough attention that it deserved, you know, because, like you said, the people that hear it, you know, usually like it, you know. So if it would have gotten more attention, we would have gotten more, more play, more stuff, we would have been able to do more things, you know, so... Um, that being said, now that's that's why we're in the position we're in now that we have to take stuff in our own hands and try to put it out ourselves and 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 get it out there, you know, because you know it's good stuff. So you know the people hopefully you know will like this one and then uh, you know keep the ball rolling, man. Yeah, you know I I, I do a lot of uh, you know I don't just arbitrarily use stuff. You know I I, I do a lot of checking and, and cross referencing and stuff, and I read a lot of the reviews of that first cycle of pain record and. Man, people, were, you know, we're just digging it, and, and you know, I, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it, you know, a couple tracks off of, off of it on our. We have an independent radio show um, every Tuesday nice. night on the internet, you know, and and you know, I've played it to a lot of friends. It's 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 sad that that industry has gone that route. You know, there's so yeah, much you know, um, it's it's really it's really uh, a messed up state of affairs now where the music business is, man. It's really. It's just a lot different than it used to be. I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, man, I just, you know, I want to get this one out and, uh, you know, hopefully people dig it. Cool. Uh, EP, right? We got, how many songs we got on that? Yeah, I think I'm going to put out four on this four. EP. Yeah. So, uh, any, any insights to it? Any, any, uh, more, it's more, more cycle of pain. Uh, we got some, um, well, it's only going to be a four song EP, so, you know, it, we, it's not that diverse like the record was, you know. 
But there's, right. there is diversity even amongst these four tunes. So, uh, just it's all our whole band, uh, no gaps on this, on these four. And, um, that's it, man. We, we did it all at my house and, you know, like I said, taking matters into our own hands, you know what I'm saying? So, but, uh, I think people are going to like it, man. Cool. And then I, I heard rumor that you guys are going to play some shows with, uh, some good friends of mine in Blackwater Rising. That, that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got like four shows coming up with those guys. Really good guys. Uh, we've done a bunch of shows with them in Jersey and New York. So, uh, we're going to do uh, four more shows with them in, uh, in, uh, Philly, New York City, uh, Jersey, and Long Island. So, that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, those cats are, I've known them for, for quite a while. And I actually just got to see them here in New Mexico opening for Kill Devil Hill. It was kind of a good little reunion type of those cats. Uh, yeah, I, just, I actually just saw those guys. I saw Rex and uh, and Dewey out when I just did the Geezer Butler tribute thing out in L.A., the bass player live thing. And so I got, you know, I used actually Rex's uh, rig when I played my stuff. So it's good to see Rex and Dewey and everybody. And, um, yeah, I was talking to them about Black Wolf Horizon because, you know, we're all friends. So I was like, yeah, they love them, you know, so it was a good time. Man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool as hell. Um, you know, somebody told me to ask you, too, about working on the Infinite Staircase project. How was that, man? Uh, yeah, you know what? I met those kids when uh, they came out on tour with us in 2009. And uh, they're from, like, Staten Island, not far from my house. So, uh, you know, when they left the tour, we, we made friends and stuff. And uh, I'd worked with them a little bit because they've, uh, they've asked me to record some stuff with them and, and, and work on some other things with them. So uh, they're just the kids, man. So, you know, well, they're really not kids anymore. But, uh, you know, they're good guys. And, uh, you know, I do anything I can to help out, you know. Nice. That's awesome. That's that's good. It, you know, it seems like you know, you're that kind of guy that you know help out and just you know enjoying life. Every time I, I see you, you got a smile on your face, and you, know, you just seem to be enjoying what you're doing. You know, and 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 that's glad. I'm glad you're able to do that. And it reflects in, in you know your your fans and, and uh, the music that you play. Yeah, I'm very I'm very blessed to do what I do, man. So uh, yeah, you know, I'm very. Like I said every time I get to play music for a living, you know, that's a good thing, bro. And that's, you know what, a lot of people I think they might not realize, too, is that you've done quite a bit of teaching, haven't you? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, all throughout the years I've taught. I went to Berkeley College of Music, so, um, you know, I've had some good schooling. And um, I just like to try to pass it off to kids and inspire, you know, other musicians and do what I can. And it's another, you know, another way to make a living in the music business, you know, be a teacher, you know. And, and uh so I, I can do what I got to do, and um, and I, I really enjoy that because you know what I'm giving back and like it's like you know when you inspire kids and, and you teach them something and they take that with them for the rest of their lives, you know it's like kind of immortality through them, you know. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. I know um, when I when I I kind of was wasn't sure about confirmation of this interview, and then uh, um, I got confirmation last night, and I said, yeah, absolutely. So I post a little deal up on. And you would be you would be surprised at the response I got, you know, some phone oh, calls, cool. and emails, and you know, so you're, you're very well respected, very well loved. Oh, that's that's nice. That's nice to know, man. Because most people hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how, man. Um, <laughs> I don't either, man. I don't either. I don't wanna, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, so Pride and Glory. Yeah, you work with Zach on that. Yeah. Now, uh, now you're working with him on Black Label. And, yep. uh, you know, how cool is that, man? How cool is that getting out on the road and seeing all those crazy... Well, you know what I mean? We exactly grew up together, you know. Uh, we met, we met like, about a year or so before he joined Ozzy. So, you know, we were friends before all this happened. You know, we were just two kids that loved, you know, Randy Rhodes and, you know, Happy Miola and, you know, all this great music. And um, it's pretty interesting to see, you know, where Black Label is now from where it was in 98 when we started it, you know, and uh, it's just, it's insane. Every time I go out there now, it's like, it's pretty cool, man, you know. Even if Zach's there, I still, I still have a good time. That's great, man. That's, you know, <laughs> it's good to see that, you know, you, you stayed in contact with, you know, like, obviously the guys in Cyclone Pain, you know, Zach Wild. It's kind of cool that you're staying with your roots and, and, and yeah, you know, um, that, you know, on the East Coast, man. I mean, we do we do have a lot of roots, you know what I mean. So uh, that's that's what that's what I love about you know where I live, you know. And uh, you know, it's it's great to be you know be able to do things that you love with people that you love, you know, and people that you've known for your, your whole life, you know. It's pretty it's pretty awesome, man. That's that's great. 
Um, you know, you are moving forward, man. Um, you got a lot of good things happening. I, I saw your signature base at NAM Schechter. Mm-hmm. That's a good yeah. I know yeah. uh, a couple of people that have snatched that up. I've seen them. You know, I've got a friend of mine that plays one. Uh-huh. Like, since, like, oh, cool, man. Right? Possession. I know uh, uh-huh. Ish and Lacey Garcia got one. They put uh-huh. pictures everywhere. And, and uh, you know, good good for you, man. Good, good on you that Schechter's taking care of you. Yeah, yeah, Schechter's, I've been Schechter uh, since, like, 06, or, oh, what was it, oh, yeah, 06, because we did the Shot to Hell record in 06, and that's what I got with Schechter, and I've been with them ever since, they've been really great to me, so, pretty cool. Hey, man, they take, a, take care of you, and um, did you design that base, is that your, your... your yeah, design? yeah, yeah, I came up with it, uh, it's like a mixture of a couple of bases that I like from Schechter, and, uh... I just, you know, put my spin on it and uh, my dimensions on the neck and uh, and basically, you know, everything I loved about their bases, I put it into this base. You know, it's neck through. It's uh, got a nice wide spacing, which I love, and it's flat all around the back, so it's really not that hard on your hand. On your Like, I'm a righty, so on my left hand, that's my fingerboard hand. And, um, yeah, the electronics in it are... are, are are nice and punchy, and uh, I, I love it, man. It cuts through on stage, you know, you know, and metal, you know, it cuts through nice because, you know, the guitar players are ridiculous, you know, out of control volume. So, uh, this actually yeah. enables me to cut through. It's pretty fast, man. Right. Yeah, it, it had a good feel. I didn't get to, get to plug it in, but when we were at the NAMM show, I, I got to handle it a little bit, and it felt really nice. Oh, uh, cool, man. Nice. I played bass a little, little myself, and I thought that was, that was a nice, nice feel to it. And, um, question to you. Why bass, man? How did you get into playing the bass? Why not the guitar well, or the drums? Or... I know, man. I was a kid, right? And uh, I was in third grade, and a, a buddy of mine showed me a picture of Kiss, and that was it. I lost it. I lost my shit. I was like, what does that guy do? They said, he plays bass. I said, well, then I want to play bass. I wanted to be Gene Simmons. <laughs> so that was it. And I was eight and nine years old, trying to be Gene Simmons, spitting blood and breathing fire, and, you know, and then uh, that music came along after that. <laughs> That's funny. That's exactly why I I picked up. You know, same thing, man. You know, I oh, what's that? You know? Yeah, exactly. So that's that's great. So you said. Uh, so did you 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 played as, as a youngster and uh, taught self taught for a while, and then you went to Berkeley, right? Yeah, yeah. I been playing. Actually, I we played as a band in sixth grade. We actually played wow. uh, a song off the Ace Freely solo record. In fifth grade, we dressed up like this and sang Detroit Rock City to the record. My drummer played the drums, actually, too. It's pretty funny. And then, uh, this grade, we all played. We played Ozone from Ace's solo record. And then I just, you know, I just continued on. And, you know, and then when I was about 13, I heard Iron Maiden. And then my ear really started to develop at that point. And I could really hear the bass pretty decent. And then I just really just started practicing a real lot. Once I got about high school, I was just, that was it, man. I was done with sports. I was done with everything. It was just all music. Nice. So how did uh, how did you end up at Berkeley, man? Um, actually, my uh, singer in Cycle of Pain, Greg Lacasio, he was our drummer when we were growing up. Like in you know in, in like when we were fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, we were we were in a band together. And then uh, his sister was going to Berkeley. Now we were we were planning on going to MI because that had just opened uh, now California. And then, um, actually, Greg's parents talked me into going to Berkeley and giving it a shot, and I got accepted, and then I went and totally loved it, man. Nice. Good, good on you, man. Did, uh, what was that experience like? I mean, how did that uh, affect it was, you? It was insane, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm a kid, you know, kid coming from just, like, you know, the suburbs here, and then to, to be thrown into Boston with all that culture and, you know, people from all over the world, the different music, all this world music, and... uh you know, different stuff I never heard. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. You know, the teachers were amazing, and then the students were even better. You know, because there was just like I said, people from all over the world that were just sharing, you know, ideas. It was really, it was really amazing. Nice man. So growing up in your house as a kid, what kind of what kind of music did you was was around you, man? What was your like formative years? Oh, uh, well, like, when I was in high school, you know, there was, you know, a couple older kids, you know, had bands here, so, you know, we thought they were the rock stars, you know, because they were playing Green Man Elise, Judas Creek, and Sin City, and all these songs and stuff, and, uh, so it was a lot of rock, you know, it was a lot of rock and metal, 
And then, uh, but once I got into Berkeley, then I really got opened up to funk and jazz and, and soul music and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, that's when I really went to another level with that. But I always, always played metal. Always played metal and rock my whole life. And that's, you know, that's where my heart lies, you know. But, but funk is like my love, man. I love James Brown and Sly and the Family Stone and Bob Marley, you know, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder. I need to listen to his on them. You know, that's, uh, I think, um, you know, I've had this discussion with several other musicians before as well. I think um, limiting oneself to, you know, to one, gi- one genre or one style of music is, is really detrimental to a person. You know, there's so much out there that you can learn from and bring into your own style. You know, that you know, don't limit yourself to just one form of music. You're just going to keep continuing to sound like that. And, Definitely. You know, I mean, you know, it's like eating, you know, one thing every day, you know. You want to eat chicken, you want to eat some steak, you want to eat some pasta, you know, you want, you want to, you know, you need variety, you know, so, um, and learning all these different musics definitely, uh, around you as a player. So this way, if you, you know, and especially in the business, you know, you need to, you need to make a living at some point in this business and, uh, the more knowledge you have, the more styles you can play, the more gigs you can get, you know, so that's where that, that's where that comes in to, to uh, for pretty, pretty big right there. Right, diversity is great, you know. And mm-hmm. if you listen to listen to your first record, man, it's it's like you said, it's and you got Send Dog on there. I mean, how cool is that? You know, you got uh, that, that was amazing, dude. I remember because Greg wrote that song a long time ago, and uh, and when he's when he was like doing his verses, man, like man, he's kind of just like be real. I'm like, this is insane. It'd be amazing. We get like the guys inside the hill to, to rap on this one day with us, and actually made that happen, which is pretty pretty awesome, man. So you know, and uh, maybe maybe uh, we'll get to work with Sam again on on a on a tune, you know, on the next EP or something. Nice. So you got uh, you guys got plans to keep putting them out, right? Uh, you know, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We're gonna you know we're gonna do like, like release this series, and then in a few months we'll put it down the road. Hopefully, we'll get to release another one, you know, then another one, you know. So nice. just as long as the people you know like it, and they can they can get it, you know, and then. uh That'll make us, you know, keep going. So it's up to everybody now. So now, now you put we put it in the fans to, you know, get this out there and get it going. So I'm going to put a challenge out to my listeners right now, people that are going to listen to this later. Pay attention. Get this EP, man. Help these guys keep making them because quality music like this is up to us to, to support. I uh, appreciate it, man. Yeah, we got, you know, it's, it's a different world nowadays, man. There's a lot of great music out there that doesn't get heard. So, you know, if we... People will, uh, you know, take a listen to it and like it and, you know, turn people on to it and just keep passing it down the line, man. That's it. And that's my mission, you know. I, it makes me feel good when I when I see comments and, and people get old of me and say, wow, I never heard that before. That's great. Thanks for bringing it to me. I, you know, right, I, right. I give a rap ass. I'm not getting paid to do this, you know. I'm doing this for the love of music. And right. I've been around this people for a long ass time. And, you know, there's quality music being made out there. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that, you know, I'm going to do my damnedest to give it an outlet. Oh, we appreciate it, brother. We need more people like you, my man. That's well, uh, you know, like I said, I'm gonna be spreading the word and you know, there's there's people out there. We just got we got a little underground network going that we're gonna try and get bigger and better and get a little more organized and you know, when Rock and Roll first started back in the day, you know, in the early days it was word of mouth. People were handing records back and forth to each other before there was really radio. And yeah, I think that's where we're at right now is Yeah. You know, back to that word of mouth thing, you know. What's that band? Tell me about this. Here, let me hear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. You know, I'm you know seeing somebody wearing a shirt. Hey, what's that? You know, and and that's what we're that's what we're back to doing. And you know, Cyclopane. You know, you, what you're doing. You know, is, is is a band that I think I can get behind, and a lot of people can get behind. So we're, I'm, I'm glad you're doing it, man. Yeah, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your time, and uh, everybody, you know, taking a listen, man. It, it's awesome. So. The new EP, Pain Us, still going to be called Pain Us, right? Yeah, I think so. I think we're going to go with that title. <laughs> nice. It's funny, oh, dude. People, people don't get it, but some, the ones that do are like, they just die laughing hysterically. So I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so when it does hit, well, what's the outlet board, man? How are we going to get it? Uh, I think it'll probably be on iTunes and stuff like that, right? At first, I think it'll be a di- uh, digital distribution at first. And then we're going to try to get some, uh, some, uh, you know, physical, you know, so then we can actually sell CDs, you know what I mean? And with the artwork and everything, 
But I think at first it's probably just going to wind up being like on iTunes, CD, baby, stuff like that. Nice, man. And uh, you crop a merch? You got some shirts and stuff coming out too? Or yeah, 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 we got some new stuff. And uh, it'll all be up on our site. We're we're, we're working our site right now. So uh, we're trying to get everything rolling. You know what I mean? Like I said, everything changed now. So we really got to take a lot more on. So uh, it's right. going to take a little time. But uh, I think that's the way to go right now at this point, unfortunately. But you know what? We got we to gotta struggle through and, and uh, make it happen. See, and that's good. I mean, I'm glad that you're persevering. You know, you, you know the inside and you know what's happening. So you're going to make it happen, and that, that's cool. That that's, shows perseverance, and that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so looking forward, man. Are we going to gonna try and hit the road uh, beyond your little East Coast dates? Are we going to... Well, you know, we would love to. We we would love to, but that's going to have to, you know, wait a little bit until we can really, you know, do something. Maybe at first we could maybe do some weekend stuff, you know, maybe get up to Boston, maybe get to like Pittsburgh, you know, like, you know, stuff that we could still kind of drive to, you know, that's, you know, that's on our, you know, it's out of our area, but I mean, it's still, you know, we can get there within, you know, a half a day, you know, so we're going to probably have to do some stuff like that at first and just keep trying to like extend that circle, you know. That's really all we could do. Nice. So, um, teacher with Black Label, what's happening there? What's that? Thing? What's happening with uh, with Black Label? Anything in the future? Uh, we're doing a new or? record. That's gonna that's gonna be coming out probably around March or April next year. Nice. Yeah. So I got some time off from D- from DLS. So really got to focus on cycle and uh, you know, get as much happening as we can. Then. Hey man, I'm glad you got some time to do that. We've been talking yeah. to Mr. J. DeServio from Cyclopane Black Label Society. Um, the floor is yours, brother, right now. Is tell the world what you want to tell them, and then we'll get out of here. Well, man, I just want to thank everybody for the support, you know, supporting BLS for years at Cyclopane. And, uh, you know, check out our new EP coming out soon. And, uh, you know, I hope I hope enough people like it where they're going to make us go to, go to their town, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I hope I hope for a lot of uh, you know new listeners and uh, you know what I appreciate your time though and just want to thank you too. Man. Oh man, thanks a lot. Yeah, for you. Um, all my my listeners after all the, the legions of the Hellion fans, you know I'm going to be pushing this new cycle of pain in your face. So yeah. Um, so you guys are going to you guys are going to get a taste of it and uh, you know I want you to get out there and support. Let's keep rocking bands like this going. Uh, the I appreciate it, out. my brother. J.D. DeServio, the badass bass player from Cycle Pain Black Label Society, and we're out. <laughs>